questions and you want to make sure you don't forget them, put them in the chat and we'll get to them at the end and we'll make sure everyone gets a chance. Um, and if you need to follow up in the Discord uh, in the sponsor channel for Circle. But Allison, Juan, the floor is yours. All righty. Thank you, Luke. And um, hey, everybody. Um, and welcome to the session. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you all are having a wonderful time at, at NFT Hack today. And I want to give a huge shout out to the ETH Global team for hosting us and, and putting this together. Um, my name is Juan Lopez and I'm based in Miami. And I work in the product marketing team at Circle. I really focus on the crypto native vertical, which in other words, I, I get the awesome privilege to work together with our revenue, our product and our marketing teams to position all of our products and services uh, to the most crypto friendly businesses around the world. And uh, I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Allison. Allison, you wanna introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining us here today. We're super excited to uh, go through Circle's API products and how you could incorporate them into the projects that you're working on. Uh, I'm a solution engineer at Circle, uh, which basically means that I help out with technical questions. So anything that relates to integrations with our API products, uh, I can hopefully help out with those. Uh, so really excited to, to get to walk you through our uh, product suite and uh, help, hopefully you guys will be able to integrate with us. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. So we're here to talk to you about building Web3 Commerce with, with USDC. Uh, I'm sure with the, with the audience that we have here today, we've, we've all witnessed what 2021 has done for NFTs. Um, we've seen everything from punks becoming one of the most prestigious avatars in crypto to loot, uh, really redesigning the way we think about community co-creation. And, and we're now starting to see what these building blocks uh, do to help us tokenize art tokenized property, tokenized culture. Um, and we're, we've been at a point where non-fungible tokens and, and JPEGs really have everybody's attention now. And although some people do see the space as a, as a marketing opportunity and, and may use it to make a quick buck, I think most of us here today uh, do see the real value behind NFTs and are looking to build a product or service with, with long-term incentives um, around their communities. I'm sure most of us uh, here have experienced what it's like to onboard into crypto, uh, go through an on-ramp, send the first on-chain transaction, run out of gas, uh, get a failed transaction, or, or even mint NFTs. And I think we can all agree that we can leverage all the open source tools and, and, and really all the amazing talent that's jumping into this space to continue to design the ideal user experiences for, for Web3 Commerce. I think our goal here today is to hopefully nudge you a little bit and to letting us join you along for that ride. So what we're building at Circle is a very simple solution for NFT platforms and applications to onboard users into crypto in a scalable fashion. Um, and, and we'd love to talk to you about what that means exactly. So at its core, Circle's building internet native payments and treasury infrastructure all based on USDC. We think that part of that long-term value creation that we spoke about uh, the first couple of slides comes with having a very seamless and trusted user experience, specifically around payments, and more importantly, with, with users who are not necessarily crypto native into the applications that we're building. So throughout the next couple of slides, um, I'd love to just talk a little bit about USDC, about our APIs, and, and how our fiat infrastructure can help us seamlessly connect uh, crypto with, with traditional finance. So let's start with USDC. Um, 2021 was a, was a great year for USDC. Together with everybody here, um, we've, we've grown USDC supply about 10x and 90% uh, of that still, still lives on Ethereum. So looking forward to, to 2022, what that means is there's now much more liquidity, much more volume, and more blockchains to build interoperable commerce on Web3. For, for us, it's really about the USDC like governance, its regulatory footing, and, and the trust from everybody here, the, the crypto community, the Ethereum community, that's allowed developers and builders to, to design blockchain applications that leverage USDC payments with confidence. So let's let's dig into let's dig into payments. Um, 
We, we believe that crypto native goods do deserve crypto native payments um, with Circle. You can send and receive blockchain payments across our supported blockchains with, with a super simple API integration. Um, and something we're currently testing in beta is BTC and ETH payments as, as well, which um, we're, we're super excited about. Um, but as most of you know, um, onboarding net new users into crypto is it's not super easy. And, and it does involve going beyond the blockchain payments which is why our payments infrastructure was designed to enable businesses and projects of all sizes um, to easily bridge in and out of crypto. So our APIs allow you to accept traditional payment methods, cards and ACH um, for your customers to buy digital goods in a method that they're still familiar with, um, maybe while they're still learning to use something like a MetaMask wallet. And just as importantly, we support programmatic uh, payment payouts in ACH and, uh, and also wires back to creators, to developers and, and sellers that are already interacting with your platform um, so that you can reach more people in more countries. So uh, the next question is, is really, how does this all come together um, now, that we, now that we're going beyond just sending and receiving payments and we're thinking about designing a more robust, uh, say, marketplace experience. With Circle, uh, you can actually integrate both payments and uh, payouts functionality, the, the functionality that we just covered really, with the ability to create user accounts and manage balances. So what this ultimately does is it essentially enables us to create scalable, a compliant marketplace solution um, that lets you focus on the design on the creative aspects of your NFT and on the minting and custody of your NFTs while you look at Circle as the core financial architecture to your platform. So with one API integration, you can stand up user accounts, you can top them up with USDC from an external wallet, or you can top it up with fiat um, from cards or ACH. And more importantly, you can design highly customizable funds flows the way that you see fit. So in the end, we provide you with all the tools that you need to position your product for, for growth across users, across blockchain ecosystems, um, with the blockchain partners and the blocks that we support for USDC, while still allowing you to stand up a compliant uh, digital marketplace with, with confidence. A uh, great example of how we've been able to do so is uh, with Dapper Labs, in which beyond the initial sale of a CryptoKitty or a Topshop pack, buyers and sellers could connect up to this marketplace and they're able to do peer-to-peer -peer transactions or if they'd like to keep funds on the Dapper platform, they can, or if they'd like to withdraw them on chain through an external USDC wallet, um, they can do so as well. So it's really whether it's a blockchain-based game managing in-game tokens or a sports NFT platform that's looking to enable trade within their community, Circle really acts as the core financial layer um, of that digital marketplace. So with that, um, I'm going to pause there and I'm going to hand it over to Allison, who's really going to talk to us about what this looks like in practice and hopefully share some resources to inspire you and, and let us join you in that journey towards building Web3 Commerce. So over to you, Allison. Awesome. Thanks, Juan. Uh, yeah, so we're going to get a little bit into the weeds now, uh, and we're going to actually show you some technical examples of what it looks like to integrate with Circle uh, and make everything that Juan just talked about uh, a reality for you guys. Uh, so in terms of our API products, uh, really what we're looking to do, like Juan mentioned, is connect uh, both your crypto native users and your less crypto savvy users. Uh, so for your users who are coming onto that platform and they just really like that NFT, they want to buy it, but they have no idea how to create a wallet. They've never purchased cryptocurrency before. All they need to do is give you their debit or credit card. Uh, but for those crypto native users, you still have an option to allow them to pick their favorite chain of choice that USDC is available on, uh, and then they can send that as payment as well. Uh, so to talk a little bit about Circle's uh, API products and the way that they're split out, uh, we have three main products that we offer. Uh, and these typically, uh, these are all kind of mixed and match uh, when creating an NFT marketplace uh, that's compatible with Circle. Uh, the first is the payments API, uh, and that is kind of what it sounds like. It allows you to accept payments, uh, both fiat uh, and crypto native payments uh, from your end users. 
Uh, so in terms of the fiat side, we're talking mainly cards, ECH, SEPA, and wires. Uh, cards probably being the most popular among most users. Uh, and then on the crypto native side, uh, that is going to be multi-chain USDC. Again, on eight of those blockchains that we support today. Uh, and then also uh, ETH and B yeah, Ether and BTC uh, payments coming soon. Uh, on the flip side of that, we have our payouts API, which is pretty much the exact opposite of our payments API that allows you to redeem the USDC in your Circle account. Uh, and then you can just send that back out uh, again in the form of via, uh, via ACH, SEPA, or Wires, uh, or through a blockchain transfer of sending USDC to any of those wallets on chain. Uh, and then finally, we have our accounts API. And the accounts API is really meant to allow you to create a wallets infrastructure, or you can think of it like a ledger infrastructure for your marketplace. Uh, so this allows you to really easily store user balances and also enable peer-to-peer -peer sales uh, between different users on your platform. And because these are all taking place within Circle sub-account infrastructure, uh, there are no gas fees, <clears throat> gas fees involved. Uh, so you don't have to worry about paying additional fees uh, when you want to kind of add that secondary marketplace layer uh, to your NFT marketplace. Uh, so we're going to go into an example here of uh, both card and USDC payments uh, to start out with. So for enabling card payments, the first step of this is for you to build a user interface to collect those card details from your user. So when we talk about that, we're talking things like card number, CVV, expiration, and then billing details for that user. Uh, we'll ask that you encrypt those uh, that card number and the CVV on the client side of your application. We don't want unencrypted card details flying around. Uh, but once you have encrypted that and you pass it to Circle's post cards endpoint, uh, we will take care of storing that card data for you. So you don't have to worry about uh, having to store sensitive information in your database, Circle will take care of that for you. Uh, you can see here, once you've created that card, you'll get a card ID returned to you. That's what you'll use in the next, uh, in the next call to actually charge that user's card. Uh, so if we go to that call, uh, this is our post payments call, and this is what actually allows you to make a payment with that card uh, record that you've just stored with Circle. Uh, so you can see here that card ID we mentioned in the previous slide, uh, here is represented as that source ID. Uh, and you, uh, in, in this example, we're charging that user $50. Uh, so that $50 will be charged that uh, user's card pretty much instantly. So you'll know within a couple of seconds whether or not that payment was successful. There are some settlement times, uh, but you'll know at least that your user has made a successful payment while you're waiting for that USDC to settle in your Circle account. Uh, one of the nice things here is that all of these payments uh, are going to settle as USDC directly into your Circle account master wallet. You don't need to do anything else besides just making this call. Uh, once that settlement time has, uh, has been completed, that USDC will just show up in your balance. Uh, and now to talk about the USDC payment side of things, uh, this is a super straightforward uh, piece of our integration. Really all you're doing is just appending a unique deposit address to your Circle account master wallet. Uh, we typically recommend creating one address per user who requests one. Uh, this means that you can just associate that deposit address directly with a user. So you know anytime you receive USDC into that deposit address who it belongs to or who actually initiated it. Uh, so you can see here, for example, uh, this is a, a call to create a uh, ETH deposit address on your account. So this would allow a user to send USDC uh, on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, but again, you can append addresses across any of our eight supported blockchains today. Uh, and I'll get into a little bit later how you can also use your Circle account to do things like chain swapping as well. Uh, so once you've actually uh, initiated those payments from your users or they've sent that transfer of USDC, you're going to want a way to know when those payments or those transfers have actually settled. Uh, so to, the easiest way to do that is by subscribing uh, to AWS SNS notifications uh, with Circle. So you can set up an endpoint and we will send those notifications pretty much anytime the status changes within your Circle account. So that could be things like creating a card and that card status updating or creating a payment and seeing that payment uh, get confirmed and then settled. And then also for blockchain transfers, you'll see uh, the initial pending status for those. And then once that completes, uh, you'll be able to know that we've gotten the confirmations for that payment to be successful. Uh, and once you have confirmed that that payment was successful, you can use the get balances call to actually see the updated balance within your Circle account. Uh, so you'll be able to uh, pull for that balance if you want to, so that you don't have to keep track of the, the payments that are coming in. And you'll be able to see all of those payments as they land. 
Uh, and now on the flip side, uh, we're going to talk about uh, payouts as well. So we'll go uh, and go through and talk about both uh, NACH each payout example uh, and the USDC payout example. Uh, so for ACH, uh, this is a call to basically make a payout to an ACH account. Uh, we have skipped the linking step. So similarly to how you link the card before you make the card payment, you have to link the ACH account before you can make a payout. Uh, the way to do that is actually through a partnership that we have with Plaid. Plaid enables a, a secure linking process for your users. So again, you're not touching any sensitive information there. Uh, if you've used things like Venmo or FTX's app, you're probably familiar with the Plaid linking flow for connecting your ACH account. Uh, so it's a pretty seamless process and most users are pretty used to it. So this is one of the easiest, uh, most user-friendly ways to get a, a payout um, in fiat for a user. Uh, and then in terms of USDC transfers, uh, again, you can send USDC out from your master wallet onto uh, an address on any of our eight supported chains. And what this means is that uh, in our example previously, we accepted USDC in from an Ethereum deposit address, uh, but we can actually send that same USDC out to an Avalanche deposit address. Uh, so uh, that Circle account kind of works as a um, omnibus wallet and that will store all of your USDC. And at that point, it's blockchain agnostic. So you can uh, accept USDC from any of our eight supported chains and send out that USDC to, again, any wallet on those eight supported chains. Uh, so it makes it super easy for you to accept those payments and send payouts to your users without having to try to balance a bunch of different uh, USDC balances across a bunch of different chains. Uh, so that covers our payments and payouts API. Uh, so moving into our accounts API, this is really where uh, user balances on your platform come into play. So think users who want to top up their wallet balance because they're super excited and they want to make sure that they can get that next pack drop. They don't want to have to waste time entering their card details on that day. They just want to load up their account with you so they can purchase it immediately. Uh, and then the other kind of uh, user experience that this enables is those peer-to-peer -peer sales on a secondary marketplace. So once I bought that awesome pack drop, uh, now, if I want to resell one of my NFTs because I think it's worth, uh, worth a bunch on the secondary marketplace, I can easily sell that to another user on your marketplace. Uh, and you can transfer those peer-to-peer -peer, uh, payments between those sub-accounts. Again, that's totally gasless. There are no fees associated uh, with any of those transfers. Uh, so to go into the example of how to create a sub-account, uh, it's really just this one call to create a, what we call a wallet, but we also refer to it as a sub-account. Those are the same things in this context. Uh, so when you create a wallet, uh, you can add a description so you uh, know, you know which user ID it belongs to or something like that. Uh, and then you'll get a wallet ID as well that you can associate with that user in your database. Uh, and you'll be able to see the balances for that wallet uh, when you actually transfer USDC into it. Uh, once you've created an account, you can actually receive USDC directly into that account if you want to. So uh, I talked a bit before about appending a unique deposit address to your master wallet. You can also actually append them directly to these sub-account wallets. Uh, so when you do that, the USDC that, come in, that comes in will automatically reflect in the balance of that sub-account. You won't have to do any additional ledger management there. Uh, do keep in mind that for fiat payments, those are always going to land first in your master wallet. Uh, so they do need to land there and then you can transfer them to the appropriate wallet, unlike the USDC payments. Uh, and then finally, we have this uh, post transfers call, which you've also seen before when we went over the USDC payout example. Uh, but you'll see here uh, the uh, body is a little bit different when you're making a sub account to sub account or a wallet to wallet transfer. So you can see here in the destination, uh, the type instead of being a blockchain wallet and an address. Uh, it's going to be a wallet, uh, and it's going to be that wallet ID that we created in that first step. Uh, and this will allow you to send USDC between one wallet uh, in your Circle account infrastructure to another. Uh, once you've done that, that's going to be relatively instant uh, because it is just happening within Circle's database. Uh, and again, there are no fees associated with that, so it's a super quick and easy way uh, to enable those peer-to-peer -peer payments. Cool, and that kind of covers uh, what we have to offer here. So we went over uh, card payments, ACH payouts, 
uh, USDC payments and payouts, and also enabling a wallet infrastructure for buyers and sellers on the platform. Uh, and really what we're uh, aiming to do here is allow you to connect your marketplace to as many users as possible with as many payment and payout rails as possible uh, to really just form the best user experience for all of the users that you're targeting. Um, so if you guys are, are excited or as excited as we are to get started with this, uh, you can actually get a Sandbox API key at my uh, dash sandbox.circle.com. Uh, you can sign up for a Sandbox API key and you'll be able to start making calls. We also have a sample application and really good, uh, what I think are really good developer documents. Uh, so please check those out as well if you get stuck anywhere. Um, if you do have additional questions, you can also find us on ETH Global's Discord server in the sponsor circle uh, channel. So please feel free to ask questions there. Uh, we're happy to help out if you get stuck anywhere. Well, and thank you so much for joining. Uh, I think we're going to have a few minutes for questions as well. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for such an incredible presentation. Um, we have a few questions in the chat here we can get to. I think we have like eight minutes, I want to say. Yeah, we got, we got some time. So let's go for it. Is the Circle API compatible with Polygon Network? Coming from Erwin. Yeah, no. So we, we currently support eight blockchains, and that would be um, Ethereum, Solana, uh, Avalanche, Tron, Algorand, Stellar, and Hedera. Um, with with more coming soon so um definitely stay tuned to see what where we continue to support uh, usdc natively for sure for sure um i think we have a few actually uh, i'll ask you to unmute real quick hello 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 okay guys uh i have a question about uh, how the whole process works uh, if like let's say we are selling like nft we're integrating your IPI or like something. So person is like sending money like from credit card to your account, getting everything done. They get in, how they get in access to the like MetaMask and all this like this infrastructure? It's like within your uh, UI or like, can you like elaborate on that? Like if like, let's say we integrate a circle on our uh, DAP tomorrow, basically. Yeah. How is it going to be from user perspective? Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, really what we've built here uh, is a payments in, in kind of treasury management infrastructure uh, that is blockchain agnostic. So we're, we don't handle the actual NFT custody, but that also means that you can choose whatever chain you want to build uh, that infrastructure on for your users. Uh, so you can, uh, whatever you know, chain you choose to mint those NFTs on, uh, you can have those users you know, connect their MetaMask wallet to get that NFT. Uh, and in the background, what will be happening is when that user uh, makes a, let's say like $10 credit card payment, uh, you'll get that confirmation that that payment went through successfully. And then you can choose when to actually release custody of that NFT to your user. Uh, so you can think of it as kind of being uh, two separate parts of your infrastructure. Uh, you have Circle where all of those payments are running through, and then you have whatever platform you've decided uh, to build your NFT marketplace on where you'll be handling the actual custody and management of the NFTs. Oh, okay. St I still have a question, so in, who's going to be yeah, the, sure. best pers the best person to talk about this like later? I think it's like a little bit going to take too much time from from other questions. So maybe I can contact you directly like uh, right now after this uh, session. Yeah, absolutely. I think the best place would be to um, ask any additional questions in that Discord channel. Uh, we'll be okay. able to view those there and then we can uh, take them back to the right people on our side. Okay, thank you, thank you. Samuel, do you, do you have a question? Um, yes, I have a question. Um, why I actually joined this um, session was because I'm actually working on a project, a Web3 project, e-commerce Web3 project. So um, this is, this sounds very interesting. So like from what I've said, so I don't really need to um, implement um, a smart contract just to receive stable coins payments using the Seku API, right? I just, I'm just going to call, I'm just going to call it, call it as a REST, as a post and get request in my application. Yep. Well, I want to 
I know that I want to ask, do you have like an escrow function? Uh, did you say escrow function? Yes, escrow function, yes. So um, not natively built into the APIs, but the nice thing about them being REST APIs is that you can put in additional controls if you want to. So a uh, part of those sub accounts is that you can really create those uh, additional wallets in your circle infrastructure and use them for any purpose that you want. So we do have customers uh, who will basically create a sub account uh, and use that as like an escrow wallet while they're waiting uh, for a specific event to trigger and then they'll make the transfers to the appropriate uh, wallets once that is triggered. Okay, then also for the API, is the API, um, is, it pay, is it like pay as you go? Can I start making use of the API then um, as um, customers are trying to buy, so I get charges for, but how is the payment of the API being done? Is it pay as you go or I have to subscribe? So Hi. you could, sorry, I was gonna say, you could get access to the sandbox now. Uh, pretty much. But as far as getting production keys to actually be able to start processing live payments, there is a subscription fee mm -hmm. tied to that. And there are transaction fees depending on the rails and the usage. Um, so for something like that would definitely, uh, you know, something that we'd reach out to our, to our sales team and, and assess the use case. Okay. Okay. Cause I'm just trying, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to differentiate why maybe I, I, I was thinking of probably why maybe I should actually migrate my web three projects. So instead of me like using making use of circle for my payments, my Web3 project. So I'm just trying to look at, but you know, it's cool. It's actually cool, but I'm not trying to see um, the benefits. So if I can write a smart contract and still do this, do these things, like right? see, you know, well, it's a cool, it's cool. It's, it's, it's a nice product. It's lovely. That's what I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Another, Thank you. another question. Um, when can Circle freeze assets? Can the die collateral address be frozen? So Circle doesn't have like the utmost discretion to go in and freeze assets. Um, the, the governance for USDC is set at the center level. Um, I, I would definitely defer to our policies and procedures on, on that front. Um, but Circle doesn't actually have like the discretion to go on and like freeze collateral. Um, yeah. I think one more question and then actually maybe fit two more questions in there. Is there a live currency conversion from the major currencies to USDC? Um, so not currently with Circle, uh, but what I will say is that it is on our roadmap uh, to basically be able to accept BTC and ETH payments. Uh, currently, we actually can accept BTC and ETH payments, but there's no conversion aspect. Uh, we are expecting uh, within you know Q1 to early Q2 of this year uh, to have like an auto liquidation feature, basically where that incoming BTC or ETH could be uh, exchanged automatically for USDC within your Circle account. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us today. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Juan. Uh, it's been an incredible presentation. Um, as I mentioned earlier, please connect with them in the Discord channels following this. It is a great way to get constant updates and, and, and learn about things when you are blocked during the weekend. We're all really excited to see what you build. Um, but thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. We're going to you know, pause the uh, recording here and uh, close the room. So. Uh, Take care. Uh, I think I, we have Thank you. a few more sessions coming up today, so uh, st stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. Thanks so much, Thank everyone. You guys.